Hey guys, it's Jordan from Waller Health Education at Leah Valley Hospital. I'm here today to talk to you guys about a topic that I think is really important, um, but it could get a little bit awkward. So you guys are lucky that I'm not face to face with you in your classrooms and that we're just doing this on a YouTube video. So today we are talking about sexually transmitted infections. Now you may have heard of the term STD. We're gonna be talking about STIs, a little bit different, but basically the same thing. So STI stands for sexually transmitted infections and STD stands for sexually transmitted diseases. Now, most common are infections, which is why we're using that term today. So we will be talking just in general about sexually transmitted infections. We're not gonna go into any specifics, so we will not be talking about chlamydia or gonorrhea or anything like that. We're just going to talk about STIs as a whole. Now, if you do have any questions about specific sexually transmitted infections or diseases, please let me know. I can make a separate video um, on whatever one you're interested in learning about. But as like a general guideline, we're just going to go over them as a whole because they're all very, very similar. So I hope that you guys learned something new today. So why are we talking about sexually transmitted infections? In the US, there are about 20 million new cases of sexually transmitted infections every year, and about half of those cases, so about 50% of those cases, occur in people your age, so ages 15 to 24. So that's about 10 million new STIs every year in people your age. So they're much more common than you guys think. So you may eventually know somebody who does get an STI, or maybe you eventually later down the line get a sexually transmitted infection. So these things do happen. They are a lot more common than you think, which is why we're talking about them. So you will learn a little bit about them, how they enter the body, what they do in the body, you know, the symptoms of them, and then what to do if you think you have an STI. And then how to prevent them as well. So it is really important that we're talking about this because a lot of people do get these infections. So just some statistics for you guys. So among high school students that were surveyed, 41% have had sexual intercourse at least once. So think about people in high school. They're still fairly young, but we have a little under half of these high school students engaging in sexual activity. 43% of currently sexually active students did not use a condom the last time they had sex. So now we have a lot of kids that are having sex, but they're also having unprotected sex on top of it. 21% said that they've used drugs or alcohol before their last sexual intercourse. So not only are a lot of people having unprotected sex, but they're also engaging in a lot of other risky behaviors when they are having sex or engaging in sexual activity, which means that because they're using drugs or alcohol, they're probably not being careful in other ways like preventing pregnancies or transmitting or acquiring sexually transmitted infections. And 12% have had sex with more than four people. So even though it's only at 12%, when you think about it, that's still a pretty high number. Now we have people in high school who are having sex with multiple partners. And the more partners that you have, the more likely you are to encounter somebody who may have a sexually transmitted infection. So what is an STI? So STI stands for sexually transmitted infection, and it's an infection that's transmitted through sexual contact, which is caused by bacteria, viruses, or parasites. So a lot of people will say to me, you know, I thought that was an STD. So why are we saying STI? So STD stands for sexually transmitted disease and STI is a sexually transmitted infection. So before we did use the term STD a lot, but doctors are trying to use the term STI more frequently because infections are a lot more common than diseases and not all infections turn into a disease. So disease is much more serious than an infection. 
And if infections are left untreated or you don't take care of them or go to the doctor, they could eventually turn into a disease or something that doesn't have a cure. So if you do get a sexually transmitted infection, one of the first things we want to do is go to the doctor because most of them are treatable and they can go away. But they could turn into a disease if we leave them untreated and they could be there for the rest of our lives or cause damage to our bodies that we will have for the rest of our lives. So it's just important that we treat these infections and get them taken care of. So how do you get a sexually transmitted infection? How do they enter the body? So infections are often spread during vaginal, anal, or oral sex, or even during genital touching. So you may not be having sex, you may not be having oral sex, but your genitals could be touching and they could spread that way. Spreading can occur even when no symptoms are present. So you could have sexual activity with somebody who may think, you know, I don't have an STI, I don't have any symptoms or anything like that, and then they engage in that sexual activity with you and they actually pass on that STI because they had no idea they even had one. So spreading can still happen even if people don't think they have one because they don't have any symptoms. 80% of people who have a sexually transmitted disease or infection experience no noticeable symptoms. So that's a really big number, and I think that that statistic is really scary Because 80% of people who have STIs or STDs have no idea because they don't notice anything off. They don't feel any different. So that's how they easily spread from person to person. Because somebody might go into a sexual encounter thinking, you know, I feel completely fine. I don't have any symptoms of an STI or an STD. And then they have unprotected sex with somebody and they pass it on to that person who then may not have symptoms and pass it on to somebody else, which is why we're seeing 20 million new infections every single year. So like I said, 80% of people who have an STI or an STD don't have any noticeable symptoms, but some people do. So just some symptoms of sexually transmitted infections. Itching or burning in the genital area or anus, pain burning or discomfort during urination, pain or discomfort after ejaculation or after sex, abnormal discharge, pain in the genitals, pelvic region, lower abdomen, or pain during sex, swollen testicles or abnormal bleeding, foul or unusual odor, bumps, sores, blisters, warts, or rashes, flu-like symptoms. So this one I think is also really interesting because sometimes your throat can hurt or you have a fever or you just kind of feel like you have a cold or the flu, but it's actually a symptom of a sexually transmitted infection. So it might not be a cold or the flu. It might actually be that you have a sexually transmitted infection that you need to have treated. So like I said, 80% of people do not experience any symptoms, but some people will. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms, it's important that you get to a doctor immediately so that they can just take care of it. Like I said, most of them are treatable so they can give you the treatment antibiotics that you need so that you can feel better. We already talked about how primarily STIs are spread through unprotected sex with someone who's infected, whether it's vaginally, anally, or orally, or even through genital touching. But there are some other ways which are a little bit less common, but they could still possibly happen. So one of them is being stuck with contaminated needles. Maybe this is at an unsanitary medical practice. Um, Maybe it's at a place where people are getting tattoos illegally. Maybe it's healthcare workers who are being stuck on accident. Um, And this is less common, like I said, but it's still happening. I remember like two or three years ago, I did see a newspaper article um, for a dentist office that was in the area. And at this dentist office, they were actually using dirty needles on their patients. So a lot of their patients were exposed to lots of different infections. Um, That is illegal. The dentist who was responsible did go to jail for that. They did get fined and charged. You are not allowed to do that. But like I said, it still happens sometimes. Some people are exposed to infections that way. 
Another way, which is very, very rare, is receiving contaminated blood through a transfusion or through an organ donation. This is rare in our country because we have lots of testing and prevention, but in other countries, this does still happen. So how can we protect ourselves? So if you choose to be sexually active, there are ways that you can protect yourself from not only getting an STI or an STD, but also from pregnancy. So the number one best way to protect yourself from getting an STI or STD is something called abstinence. So abstinence is where you don't participate in or engage in any type of sexual activity. So you are, you know, 100% abstinent from those activities. So that is the only, only way that you can 100% protect yourself. Now, I know that some people are still going to choose to engage in sexual activity. And if you choose to do that, it's important that you limit your number of sexual partners. So the fewer number of partners you have, the least likely you are to encounter someone who has an STI or an STD. And you want to use male latex condoms. So the correct use of latex condoms can really reduce, although not eliminate, the risk of the transmission, but they are very, very effective. So they're about 98 to 99% effective at reducing the risk of getting an STI or an STD. They're also really great at preventing pregnancy as well. They also have female condoms. Female condoms are only about 84, 85% effective, um, and they're still better than not protecting yourself at all. So make sure if you're going to use either a male condom or a female condom that you are using them correctly. There's also other forms of con- contraception, like birth control, which is very useful at preventing pregnancy, but taking birth control is not going to protect you against getting an STI or an STD. Another great way to protect yourself is to get tested. Not only you, but your partner as well. Because like I said in the very beginning, you may not know that you have one and your partner may not know as well. So the only way you can be 100% sure that you don't have an STI or an STD is if you get tested. And if you're going to engage in sexual activity with somebody else, you want to be 100% sure that they don't have one as well. So it's important that you get tested. So at the age of 14 in Pennsylvania, you are able to consent to your own sexual health. So this means that you are able to go and get tested. You don't need a parent or guardian with you. You can go by yourself and you can consent to that test and the results can be confidential to you. Now, there are lots of different health clinics and testing locations where you can go and it is free or very reduced cost. And again, you can have those results just completely to you, and you don't have to share it with anybody. If you go to your family doctor um, or like maybe your pediatrician and you go through your health insurance, your parents may get a bill in the mail for that. So I would just be mindful of that if you do choose to go to your doctor to have those tests done. Just be open and honest with your parents about it. Let them know what's going on. But I do have a website up here for you guys to see. Um, It's from the CDC. So you can just type it in your computer on Google. Type in, you know, CDC STI testing locations. This website will pop up. I will also copy and paste the link um, in the box below so that you guys can just click on it. So basically what you do is you type in your zip code and it finds all the testing locations that are closest to you. If you're unsure what tests you need, because there are different tests for different STIs, you can actually take a quiz and answer a bunch of questions, and they'll tell you what they think you would need. So what I did was I typed in my zip code, and it just pulled up a drop-down menu of all the testing locations that are nearest to me. So you can see that there's a few listed there. Um, The wording in blue is actually a link, so you can click on it. It takes you to their website. It also tells you their services that are offered, tells you what tests are free, um, what tests they actually offer. Um, Some of them, like the Allentown Health Bureau, they do have an actual STD um, testing location. A lot of them are free, 
And some of the tests that aren't free are very, very cheap. So if you live in the Allentown area, I do recommend the Allentown Health Bureau. I think it's a really great place to go and get tested. There are some misconceptions when it comes to STI testing or STD testing. A lot of people think that it's painful or it's embarrassing. Um, Most of the time, if you're going for a yearly checkup, once you're an adult, they ask you right then and there if you want a test anyway. Um, And I always say yes because you're already there and it's super, super easy. Sometimes it's just a quick swab. Sometimes they will do a blood test and that doesn't hurt. It's just a little prick of a needle. Sometimes they ask you to pee in a cup. Again, not painful whatsoever. And as you get older, it is easier to ask for these things or at least say yes when they ask you if you want one. So it is quick, easy, painless. It's something I think is really important, especially if you are going to engage in sexual activity. You should get tested at least once a year or every time you have a new sexual partner, just so you know for sure that you're not, you know, passing any STIs or STDs on to anybody else, but also to make sure that you're safe and healthy as well. Because if you have one, we want to get that treated so that it doesn't turn into something more serious and cause you health issues later down the road. Thanks for watching our video on sexually transmitted infections. I know it's not an easy topic to talk about, so I hope that this video made it a little bit easier for you to understand just the general concept of STIs and STDs. Although there are individual infections and diseases, a lot of them have very similar symptoms. They're all diagnosed by a doctor, and that doctor will know which one to test you for if you are having signs and symptoms. So it is really important to make sure that you get tested before each new sexual partner or at least once a year. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something new today.